Hi guys, Billy back and this time I'm going to be talking about making a 1-6 custom throne for the HC Toys Thanos that I recently received. Um, I basically made most of it out of modelling foam, you can see this blue stuff here. I believe they're going to be replacing it with the grey very soon but I just um, casually just cut out some, like a shape of the throne and I left some either side of the actual bit of modelling foam so I could you know start carving bits out as you can see from here I just used a scalpel and I slowly just uh, chipped away at the actual modeling foam until there was a, a, a shape resembling a throne so to speak but it, it took a little while it wasn't it wasn't just a quick you know 10 minute job just throw it all together it did take a little while but it wasn't too hard you can see I'm just um shaving away little edges of the corners and making it all look like it's a bit of a you know a battered and damaged uh, stone very much like Thanos would use. Now there's many things I used for this and there's certainly equipment that I used which was I used a hot air gun um, I've heard tell that a hair dryer could do so you might not need a hot air gun I also used a styrofoam cutter 15 centimeters in length which was long enough for me to be able to do everything that I needed to do and a hot wire cutter and that helped to shape the bottom of the chair and the footrest mostly but there were certain parts where I think I used on the footrest I used two different pieces of modeling foam stuck together and for the base of the chair I used three pieces of modeling foam stuck together and they were about an inch thick each so that was pretty good um, it took a little while but as we walk through and do the tutorial I'll show you everything that I did pretty much eventually my um, measurements for the actual figure were I think the base of the chair was 23 centimeters high it was 11 centimeters wide the base was 20 centimeters wide and the depth of the base of the chair was 13 and a half centimeters and as you can see I just um, once I'd carved out as much as I could from it, I then went in and I used a scalpel just to shave the edges of either side so that there was a middle panel that was raised away from the rest of it. And slowly but surely I chipped away at that and I started to even it out afterwards. It looks a mess right now and it doesn't look very good but it does even out in the end once you actually get it to a place where you're happy and I moved everything around and I shaved some more bits out. As you can see this is me tidying it up a little bit and cutting a little bit more out and getting it a little deeper into that so there is sort of a recess and there is a, a some sort of level there as you can see with this i used the rubber to try and soften the edges down a little bit because what ended up happening was it started looking very jaggedy very sharp and it looked more like an ice chair than an actual stone chair so to try and knock down some of those harsher lines i just used this rubber just to dull things down a little bit um, I will show you how to paint this, that's going to come up in a minute, but for the moment you can see I was just um, adding more texture in there, just more, putting more indentations in, and just, just getting a genuine feel for it. You, 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 once you start working on it, you'll start to see exactly what I mean by the harsh lines, and you know, you want to soften them down a little bit and make it look more like um, carved stone than, um, you know, chipped ice, so to speak. Um, as you can see I started doing the edges as well and taking down some of those harsh edges so that you know it just looked a little better and that's it and I also ended up carving in some cracks and lines I just used a pencil for that to be honest a sharp pencil and I just put those cracks and lines in there very easy to do it's not very hard guys just just run a pencil through and make some crack lines a bit more like like as if you were doing lightning I guess and then of course this is the base and to get the size of the base I actually used the Thanos figure himself and I hung it on the edge of the table then hung him off the edge as well and then I sort of tried to work out exactly where everything was going to go and also with that headrest or the, the backrest there I was able to put it behind him and work out exactly how far back that should go and how big the actual base of the chair should be so yeah once I made that line moved it out of the way and then I had to get three of those and don't triple them up so that they actually you know were thick enough and then what I did was once I put all three together I used a wire cutter now the reason I used the wire cutter and I didn't stick these all together was so that a 
once I actually could separate them and then when I put them back together they'd fit exactly right because you know they'd be keen in the right way and also um, I wanted to be able to stick two together and then have one on the top left over and what I was going to do was I was going to drill a hole in the middle and I was going to put LED lights in that didn't work out that way I'm afraid so I didn't do it but also what I did was I drew a line through them either side in a crisscross diagonal motion just so I'd find the center of the square of the actual styrofoam and then I used the uh, styrofoam heat cutter to cut a circle out in the middle and that's where you can see I used a um, two acrylic tubes that I bought and I used I think 40 millimeter wide diameter tubing and that was I think it was 36 bore and that allowed me to be able to have enough of a base there so I could hang these things off without them being too thick or too thin and they could support the weight not that there is a lot of weight because it's styrofoam then once everything was put together and the holes were cut I then just casually started carving out the uh, chair to be honest this is, I think this is actually the footrest because it's two pieces not three stuck together but you can see it's the exact same process you're going to do with the base of the chair and the footrest which is you're going to go in at an angle and you're going to try and make the bottom part of the chair smaller than the uh, top part of the chair so you're going to be going in at an angle here and taking out more from the bottom than you are from the top and if you keep just going at it and changing it and shaping it to the you know the way you want it then you're going to get better results don't worry about too much about taking too much off because it's a, a piece of carved stone and every single one is going to be different and unique. So that's not too bad. So yeah, if you don't have a wire cutter though, you could just use a scalpel, you could just use a, uh, a Stanley knife. Just use any sort of knife really, a good, really good sharp one. And you can just take chunks out and slowly but surely chip away at it. And you know, I'm drinking tea because of course I'm drinking tea. These are the armrests and I used the uh, styrofoam car and I put a hole right through the middle of it without going all the way through. And that's the acrylic um, armrest that I'm going to be using as the invisible part to hold those armrests on. Now how I did that basically was I used a heat gun and I used an acrylic rod which was 8mm thick. You can buy them on eBay quite easily and I just simply just use the hot gun, the heat gun here and I just warmed it up for about 45 to 60 seconds without going too much because you can cause bubbling if you do it too hard and once it's warm you can just bend it and if you do it slowly like I'm doing you shouldn't have too much of a problem and what I did was I held it in place and I did that for the entire acrylic um, armrest itself and what that's, what's going to happen now is that's going to go into the back of the armrest and into it and it's just going to be a super supportive way of holding me, holding up those arms as you can see in this photo here you know I bent it in the middle there and then I bent them out to the uh, left and the right and then I folded them forward so that you've got the arm on there and this is me just cutting the uh, acrylic tubing for the size that I want now I needed a height clearance of less than 16 inches so my chair is going to look a lot smaller because I just didn't have the shelf space to actually have a taller stand but as you can see I had to cut another inch for this one here but when I did I was able to put it into the base and I twisted it into the base and it, that, I had a better effect than that than using the styrofoam cut so if you get a chance probably better just twist that in and just get it so that it feels in that way and it's a lot, lot more of a cleaner insert but it's just me testing out the size height and I could tell straight away that it was too tall but then I was able to take more off that uh, tube and you know work that better for me and this is me just checking out the footrest and seeing what I did. I think between the base of the chair and the, the top of the base of the chair and the top of the footrest I think there was a space of about eight centimeters so you're doing well if you do that and then of course I hot glued the uh, armrests into the back of the chair there by just using the uh, styrofoam car to heat up the shape of the actual armrest inside and I just hot glued it in and then what I was going to do is I'm going to use some polyfiller 
and just polyfill in the rest of it just it's not going to look good it's just going to be very rough but it's definitely going to hold those arms in place and they're not going to fall out or cause any problems and as you can see then i'm going to stick the armrests onto there and they're going they're not, it's not going to be invisible but you get the impression of visibility then of course with this base I used cocktail sticks and I stuck them into pieces of the styrofoam that I cut off of the, uh, the footrest and the base of the chair earlier. And I just hot glued them like into place onto the, the, the actual base itself. It wasn't very hard, it was quite easy actually. It was not a lot of work involved really because of the way I'd cut uh, the, um, the base of the chair and the footrest anyway. I had loads of these little pieces like this anyway and the more I worked on it the more of these pieces I got so I just decided to take some of these and stick them you know onto the base itself and give it like a, I think it's stalactite or stalagmite I don't know which one's up and which one's down but yeah I gave them some stalactites or stalagmites and I also took some of these pieces that I was shaving off of these stalactites and just sprinkled them around on the base and you'll see in a minute that I use PVA glue yeah just use these bits and I use PVA glue just to stick them all down into place just dab some glue on there um, in terms of that acrylic stand if I get you some measurements there was um, I think the armrests were I think 500 millimeters in length the acrylic rod was 500 millimeters and in the middle of that was 250 millimeters so I made a line there to mark that off and then either side of that 250 millimeters, I moved uh, three 30 millimeters across on the left and 30 millimeters across on the right, and I made a bend, and I bended that upwards. So you've got a U shape in the acrylic rod, but with a, a straight line in the middle. So then uh, I went up about another five to six centimeters, and I bent the acrylic rod to the left, and then I went up another five centimeters on the right, and I built the and I bent the acrylic rod to the right, and then I did another five to six centimeters either side of that, and I bent the acrylic rods forward. So what you ended up getting was that armrest shape I showed you. So roughly around there, you're going to have to gauge the size. It all depends on what sort of base you're going to be making, how big the headrest you're you're going to make. All of this is done by eye, but you can see that. As long as you kind of follow these sort of guidelines, you'll be able to, you know, achieve what you want. And of course, this is me just doing all the bases to the base. And then we go in and we do a black paint job all over every single piece. The armrests, the backrest, the base of the chair, and the footrest. And this is uh, just me putting in the black. Now, we put a black on, but we also dab the black paint on we don't brush stroke along it because um, if you leave brush strokes on there it will show up and what you want is you want a stony effect and the way to get a stony effect is to just dab the paint on and also you can get the paint in to the crevices a lot easier by dabbing it rather than trying to paint it in there but if you dab it on there you also get this sort of mottled sort of effect on there so you get a lot more texture and it also helps with the next layer which is going to be great so once you do all the dab in here once you start here it actually helps with you being able to put the gray on easier and then of course you're going to put white on which is going to be the highlight version and that highlight is going to really add to the uh, texture and it's going to give it a matte rough finish and that's exactly what you want because you want it to look like stone you don't want it to look like someone's just painted um, styrofoam with a paintbrush and that's just me just showing you I used a sponge to um, sponge all the pieces with the grey paint rather than using a paintbrush at this point because I didn't need to go into all the deep dark crevices with the um, paintbrush I just needed to get all the outside area and then of course this is the white highlight you need a lot less of this and this is, this is a bit of slapdash for me this is just an example I put together because I didn't film me painting every tiny piece but you can see that there's an effect there where you get this sort of grey stone whitewash effect and then before I painted the chair I just used polyfiller on the back of the chair just to try and be able to hold that armrest in place a little more and make it a little bit more invisible now I did a bit of a slapdash job on it as you can see I haven't gone all the way in and filled it completely 
I'm not too bothered. I'm not going to look at the chair from the back. But that was, the, you know, the effect I went for. So now you can paint the whole chair perfectly. And this was me just just showing you in a lot more of an easier point. Me painting the base, and I made the base deliberately darker than the rest of the chair, so it stood out more. And of course, here's the chair. Now the chair is all done. It's all painted. Now I need to do the footrest. I've done that. I think I've done most things. The only thing I haven't done now is the armrests. Everything else is painted. Everything else is in place. I need to put the uh, clear acrylic tubing onto the base itself. But that's not too big a deal. That's something I can do in a minute. But as you can see, it fits on nicely. I would have got more clearance and it would look taller, but I didn't. And of course, here are the armrests on the chair. And the way I did that was by just sticking a heck of a load of hot glue inside those armrests and then just shoving them onto the, um, the acrylic stand. And then the best thing was I was able to hold it for a little while and get it firmly in place. So you can see it. there's a little bit of glue dripped out there. It's not a big problem. Again, I'm not looking at it from the back. And you can see the slash dash job I've done on the back of that chair. But it's okay, because again, I'm not looking at it from the back. It was just there just to make sure I covered all the bases and I'm quite happy with the chair now the way it's all set up it's all good I hope Thanos fits on it and this is the result of the whole thing this is the HC Toys Thanos and he is sitting on the throne quite comfortably there's no wobbly pieces it's all firmly on there it was a really enjoyable sort of project this I really enjoyed doing it it's quite a simple one as well when you saw me putting it all together that's as hard as it is it's not a very difficult job but um, yeah all, all you need to do guys is test things out test the water and you know see what works best for you you can even get a taller chair than this I couldn't have a taller chair but you can definitely get him higher up you can also use um, some styrofoam cutters to put some holes in the base of that chair and put some LED lights on I don't need the lights the lights are always getting away from me anyway so it's not a big deal Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like and subscribe, and if you could do me a favor now, if you get the fuck out of my cave, I'm gonna try and put this guy on the shelf. Thanks a lot guys, bye bye.